All right, enough mess with AI. Time to mess with some Arduino Pro Micros. Welcome everybody back to the channel. Today, we're building more stuff with a 3D printer. Maybe in the future, we're gonna have some footage of 3D printing stuff, but we need a better camera for the 3D printer. But until then, we do have all the parts in front of us and we're gonna be building a Stream Deck. Now, Stream Decks are somewhat expensive. There are cheaper varieties of Stream Decks out there, but I would say the cheapest variety you can find is one you can build yourself. And we're gonna be using a little Pro Micro today. And these little tiny boards are around nine bucks on AliExpress or Amazon or wherever you can find them. And then we have some switches, which I have some from multiple keyboard builds I've done. I have plenty of switches sitting around and we have 3D printed keycaps. So, and that's really all it takes. And we did a little painting to the housing. Not too much, not too fancy. The bottom looks like crap because I didn't paint the bottom. Okay, now to actually get this assembled, it's going to need a few things. Obviously we have our switches, we have our plate, we have the housing, we have the Pro Micro and the USB cord and obviously our switches. So one of the first things we're going to have to do, get the switches into the housing um, and then do some basic watering, watering. Do some basic water. Oh my God. Why do I keep saying watering? <laughs> okay, so we can get right into assembly and it's not that complicated. This is super easy for just about anybody to do. And even the program is gonna be fairly easy because we already have a set script that someone else already wrote that we can just drop into this little Pro Micro to get it to run. But we do have to get the switches onto the plate and then do some basic wiring to get it soldered up and ready to go for the Pro Micro. It isn't too hard. We have to hook a ground wire to every single one, then individual pin we have to send over to the Micro. And then after that, we'll put it together and plug it in, flash the new software, and see if it works. So this is the basic concept after we have our switches in. We want to wire the ground wires all together because and hook the ground wire all to one pin on the Pro Micro. But the easiest way to do that is we're going to do in a little zigzag motion across the whole board, going down one row, back up one row, and down the other. And yes, before anybody makes the comments, I know there is a slightly easier way, but I do not have diodes right now where you could turn this into rows and columns. And we're also not using the QMK software, we're gonna be using Arduino software. So the code I have doesn't exactly work with the rows and columns idea, but in a future video, we will be doing that and showing that off. We do have plans to do that. All right, so as you can see, we have our ground wires all soldered up and ready to go. Now, we don't have a different color for every single pin. We don't have 12 different colors, I should say. Um, but we are gonna do one color per row. So the first row, so one through four is gonna be red, uh, five through eight will be yellow, and then nine through 12 will be green. So let's get these wired up, and then I'll explain to you how we're actually going to wire this 
to the slope. Our next step is going to be have to wire this up to the Pro Micro and we don't have to solder to every single pin on the board. We got to start with the ground one and work our way around off to the other side to get every single row attached and we're just going to start with uh, green and just work our way down from red then to yellow then to red um, and then it'll be all put in and then we can actually add it to the housing, plug it in, flash some code and hope it works. All right, so we have everything soldered up. I mean, it ain't the perfect job of soldering, but it isn't a bad job of soldering either. Granted, I'm doing this in like a rush a little bit because we're filming a video, uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's all ready to go. We just got to put this in the housing. We're going to use some tape to hold it down for now because uh, it doesn't actually, it's not screwed down or anything. Um, eventually, I think I'm just going to hot glue it down onto the housing. But for now, we're just going to double side tape it, plug it in and flash some software. But first, let's get it in there. Uh, and get these keycaps in there. And if you notice with these keycaps, these are 3D printed, but if you notice, they have a little bit of a texture on them. Um, and it also makes it look kind of like it wasn't 3D printed because it's so meticulous of a pattern. Uh, and if anybody's wondering, uh, hold on. Uh, all this is really is the, in the options. So there is an experimental function within like Kira called fuzzy print. If you just search it, you can activate it within Cura. You can turn this on and it gives you this little texture on the side. It's really cool. Okay, everybody, so we have our little gadget plugged in here. Uh, we do need some software, which we already have loaded on the computer, but if you do need the software, if you plan on doing this project, you are going to have to get familiar with the Arduino software from this webpage, which will be linked below. You just download the software, install it. It's a really, really small program. It doesn't really, all you're using it for is flashing. Uh, once you have it loaded up, uh, there will be a default script on here that'll start showing it's like a basis for a script that you can start writing, but you can just delete that if you're gonna be flashing this one, because you're going to need a script and the link to the original Thingiverse project will be below uh, for this, which is actually a remix of another project, which the original creator is credited in the script. So let's get into that. So uh, one thing we gotta do, we gotta grab our scripts right here. 
We're going to do a control A. We're going to copy everything and go back to our software and paste it. And now that we have everything on there and make sure everything is there, nothing's screwed up, everything's defined correctly, things are checked off properly, all that fun stuff, we want to make sure our board is being seen. So obviously go to your boards, go to Arduino, make sure for this one, this is the Leonardo, uh, we're gonna choose. And then also we wanna make sure the port, yep, COM4, that your port is being recognized as well before we flash. So, and if that's all checked off and ready to go, we can upload. So let's see what happens and hope for the best. <laughs> Completion error. Include does not name have a name type. What? Oh, I see. It's on this. It's on this line. Okay, let's try this again without a missing hashtag in our code. That somehow flew away. Anyway, we have it all selected. We have our thing selected. We do have the same board selected. We have it in the port. We have Leonardo selected. Now let's upload. No upload port provided. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's try this again. Apparently it unselects your port if you have a failed compiling error. Didn't know that. Now I know that. Now you know that. So to reiterate, triple check. Make sure your port is selected. Make sure your board is selected. Leonardo, if you're using this one. Not all boards are created equal. Let's compile and upload again. Yeah! <laughs> okay, I think it is all done, everybody. No errors, nothing blew up, nothing caught fire. At this point, I expected the camera to catch fire because I compiled the code wrong. So let's get into it. <laughs> So before we move any further, we do have everything flashed to this. We're not sure if it works yet, but I want to explain what we actually did. So your regular keyboard right here has F keys, goes to F12. But a lot of people don't know it goes higher than that. You just don't have any keys to use it. It goes higher than 12, which is what we did. We went past F12 and we used every F key past F12 for each one of these switches. So we're going to start at F13 and just move your way up which is really useful because you don't have to use any of the hotkeys that are already assigned to your keyboard. And now it's a it's its own stream deck that works independently from your keyboard, even though it's using the same keys. Because a lot of people don't realize if you actually assign that the same F key, it's going to do the same thing on both. You can't just create two different hotkeys on two different devices and expect different results. So let's test it and see if it works. So to do that, let's go into OBS. Okay, so if we go to settings, Let's go to hotkeys. So after we select it, so let's do that. Let's hit the white key. And we have that white key is now assigned to F16. Um, and say we want to stop stream. So we're going to have the key right below it. Stop stream. Pretty easy enough. Same thing with recording. Say if recording, we can do the ones right next to it. We can just do start recording, stop recording. Now, uh, if we hit apply, hit OK, and if I want to, hey, start a stream, I can just hit start recording. We're recording. And then to stop it, it's now stopped. We now have a stream deck we built ourselves for a very fraction of the price. Granted, I have a 3D printer. It's only an Ender 3. It's one of the cheapest three printers out there. I've made tons of upgrades to it. Uh, so it's beyond an Ender 3 at this point, but it's still an Ender 3. And I have a lot of the switches and stuff hanging around, but that's for us hobbyists out there. We have these parts lying around. We can build these things.
Okay, everybody, this is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed making this little project with us. It turned out way better than I thought it was going to be, and I like the color scheme a lot better than I thought as well, even though I kind of did the color scheme on the fly. And it worked out really great. Uh, and the keycaps printed amazing. I was really glad to actually discover this whole ability in Kira to give textures to things. Um, and you'll see that more in the future. So if you want to do this build, it's really, really simple. I'm going to leave a link to Thingiverse where it originally came from. And this project actually is a remix of another stream deck that's actually a little smaller. So you can do that one if you want to too. And that guy did a whole post on his website about it. Uh, but it's really cool. It's really easy to do. And like I said, you can get these little Arduino boards for around seven to nine bucks on Amazon. And granted, these are USB micro. Don't forget that. They're not USB-C. There are USB-C variants, but they cost a little bit more. Uh, so if you want to save some money, micro is not that bad to go with. You can find, you can still find micro cables everywhere for it's really cheap. So yeah, why not save some money, build your own stream deck. You're wondering what I'm going to do with it because this is going to be my own little personal stream deck. We actually have real stream decks at the studio that we use for our live streaming and stuff. This is going to be on my desk for like launching like DaVinci, Photoshop, all our creative apps. If I ever start streaming again, this is going to obviously be controlling OBS and stuff. But for now, it's going to be like little hotkeys, loading LUTs up and stuff like that within the creative apps I use. It'll just make it a little easier for me instead of hitting like the two hotkeys on the keyboard. It'll move things along a little faster. So that's just one aspect you can use it for. But let us know in the comments what you're going to use this for if you do build it. And if you do build it, let us know below because we'd love to hear from you and any feedback you want to give, whether we did it wrong, right, indifferent, doesn't matter. We want to hear from you. So you guys know we do have a Patreon. That link is always below in the description. Right now it's super basic. You get three bucks and you become an agent of tech. You're not going to get anything out of it. Eventually we are going to open up the Discord to the public as we get things sorted out so people can join. And there's going to be a number of very different channels you can go into and talk about different things. But that's in the future. It's not right now. We got to get the other things sorted out. And obviously going forward, there are going to be newer tiers and more things that are going to come with that. We are going to have exclusive content and all those things that'll come eventually. But we have to get to that point. We're only just now reaching around 2,500 subscribers, which is huge for us. Thank you guys for all subscribing. You guys are amazing. It's been a long road getting here. So remember, let us know in the comments, hit subscribe, hit that bell, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.